Hello Canadian gardeners, cool climate gardeners, and gardeners of the extremes. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, we take that science and we apply it to gardening and plant care. So if you like the sounds of that, be sure to hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments below what zone you are from because it helps me engineer my videos better suited towards you guys. If you're returning, hello, I appreciate you guys so much. I wanna thank you for all your comments. They are making a huge difference. The channel is growing enormously and it just warms my heart, so. Thank you so much. Today's video, we are gonna be talking about foliage and specifically when it's time to cut that foliage off because of damage. We are in the middle of July and that means that we may have some dead foliage, whether that be from winds that have somehow made their way into Saskatchewan, literally if you are in from the Saskatchewan area, hoo, 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 hoo. we have wind this year. It is actually insane, but I digress. Or if it's a rogue squirrel, maybe your dogs got into the garden, decided to dig a hole and maybe snapped a branch or two. Or if it's just generally dead foliage because your plant is aging. These rules apply to the garden, but they also apply to plants such as the one behind me, house plants, for example. In order to know whether or not it's time to clip the plant or not, we should ask the plant the question, can you repair this? And the answer usually when it comes to leaves is no, of course there are exceptions. I'm not getting into the exceptions here, but one of them is Sansevieria, which technically isn't Sansevieria anymore. It's technically classified as Dracaena. Fun fact, anyways, it's actually true. I'll pop up a paper here. Though those leaves are repairable. It's a snapped stem in the case of a tomato, for example, or even the monster behind me. Those are fixable through propagation. But if it is a leaf, generally this is not fixable. The reason being is something has affected the translocation of nutrients, water, and hormones even, for example. Once you disrupt that green highway, it's game over for that leaf. Now, how many dead leaves do you need to warrant removing or not removing? Well, it kind of depends on personal preference. Now, if you have a dead leaf, get rid of the dead leaf. And the reason for that is because if it's brown, that means there's no chlorophyll present. Present. If there's no chlorophyll present, that means there's no photosynthesis happening. And it's kind of just an energy sink. So whether it be bacterial, fungal, or just from weathering, remove the leaf because it can cause issues. And I know this is a hotly debated topic as to whether or not you should, but just get rid of it, gone. And there's multiple reasons for why it's going to a look better it's going to prevent diseases and pests it's not going to be a little home for bugs to hide under just take it off put it in the compost done now if you have half a leaf or a portion of a leaf that is damaged at what point is it time to snip that leaf off and you're probably thinking this is a stupid question when it comes to things like tomato plants for example but in the case of something that's decorative like a pairs of paradise or an elephant ear or the plant behind me or a rubber tree this or a fiddly fig these are valid questions because you don't want to just start snipping off every leaf with a little bit of a brown spot and i would say if over 50 percent of your plant leaf looks like it's been damaged or dead or is brown meaning it's not photosynthesizing, so it's not giving the plant any energy. It actually can act as a sink for nutrients. So meaning it's capturing nutrients and giving none back to the plant. Once it gets to that point, um, you may wanna cut the whole leaf off. If it's less than 50% of the leaf itself, you may want to think about just snipping the design of that blotch out of the system, um, again, to prevent from the energy loss through leaching, but it's kind of up to you. I mean, if you're totally turned off by jagged edges being cut out of your leaf, get rid of the leaf in its entirety. Um, if it's over 50%, get rid of it in its entirety. But if it's like 10% or less, you may just wanna cut out that portion. I know that sounds weird, but it, it does work. It actually does work. 
The only thing I will warn against when it comes to removing leaves is you don't want to remove more than 30% of the leaves that exist. So if you looked at my tomato pruning video where I talked about removing foliage to increase yields and kind of the science behind that, you'll note that I say don't clip off a stem or a sucker as I like to call them if it's the size of the regular stem. And the reason for that is if you start cutting off too much of the upper biomass, technically you can harm the plant because you're affecting the balance that the plant has achieved. Don't remove more than 30% of your foliage regardless. Remove some and then wait for a week for everything to level back out and then remove more. Never trim it all in one day. And the reason for that is because there's a kind of an equilibrium between the root mass and the biomass above. And there was actually a really good question that someone posed as to whether or not the biomass above ground equals the biomass below ground and vice versa. And the energy that's made through photosynthesis above ground actually does fuel the fire underground as well. I don't think people think about that very often, but you don't want a bunch of rotting dead roots that don't have the energy to survive below ground because you chopped off a majority of the upper biomass. And that's why things like bulbs, for example, like tulip bulbs, um, if you cut them too off, or off too early in the spring, they aren't able to sink or store enough energy in the bulb for the year after. And that is essentially what roots are, is they're an energy store and they don't necessarily make the energy. Um, that's what photosynthesis is for. Now, I want to do a video so bad where I show you this unbelievable study that was done by the plant science department at the University of Saskatchewan, which is the university that I went to. And it's a photo, it's an actual plant, and it's a fescue grass, which is native to the Great Plains in North America. And it shows the biomass above ground relative to the biomass below ground. And it's insane how much root is attached to so such little biomass above ground. But I'm gonna share that video. I'm gonna fingers cross that this outside world settles down eventually and I can get back into the university to show you guys because right now it's, it's in lockdown. Like you can't get inside. So I can't even show you this plant. But um, I'm holding off, fingers crossed, that I can get into the university and actually show you guys what this, this thing looks like. Because um, it is pretty insane. And then I will explain a little bit more about the relationship between the two. But for right now, um, I will say just keep it under 30% a week if you are starting to trim away to plant. Because... What you see above ground isn't the whole plant. There's a whole life underneath. And um, when you start chopping away too much at the top, you can affect the bottom. So just simply that. So I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.